Hi guys and welcome to another Divi theme video. This is Jamie from System22 and WebDesignAndTechTips.com. Well, we're using the great Divi Supreme Pro plugin today. It's a premium plugin. To do this, you'll need the Pro version. And we had a question on one of our other videos where we had Divi Supreme. They were asking, can you add a pop-up contact form to the header? And simple answer is, yep, really easy to do. Now we've got to do a couple of things to do this today. We've got to create the contact form that we want to pop up. And we've also got to create a custom header up here. Now creating custom headers you can do with the inbuilt features of the Divi theme itself. The actual pop up is being powered by the Divi Supreme Pro module. So let's go down to our dashboard. And once you've got Divi Supreme Pro installed and activated, if you don't have it, you can get it from the link below this video. And there's also a free version, but you will need the pro version to do this today. And if you click on it, it'll take you to this page. You want to make sure that you've got enable Divi pop up set to on right there. So it's purple just like that. Once you've done that, save your changes. If you forget to do this, this will not work today. So make sure you do that. OK, so the first thing we need to do is create the contact form that we're going to have pop up and save it to our library. So let's enable the Visual Builder. Once enabled, I'm going to go down and just add a new module, contact form module. It doesn't matter where we put it because we're going to delete it after we save it to our library. So I'm going to just add it right here. TV comes as standard with all the light gray modules here. When you install Divi Supreme Pro, you get another 40 or so modules, these dark blue ones here, and there's some absolutely awesome modules here, there really is. So we're going to use a regular Divi contact form to make our little form. There it is right there. I'm, I'm going to keep this very simple. I'm not going to spend too much time styling this form. I think I'll add a new field just for a subject or something like that. And I'll just pop that below the email right there. OK, and rolling on down the important settings here. You can give it a title if you want, which will appear just above it. Success message. Say whatever it is you want it to say when it's sent. The submit button, I'm going to leave mine as submit. You can write whatever you want in there, message, send message, or whatever you want to write in there. Here's the important one, email, just down below, and we're still on the content tab in the contact form. This is where you want to put your email address that it wants to be sent to. So it'll be me at myemail.com, or whatever your email address is, obviously. If you want it to redirect anywhere afterwards, you can enable a redirect here and take them wherever you want to take them. But I'm happy for it to just pop up the success message. Spam protection lets you add spam protection service like Google Capture or something like that. I'm using the basic one down here, which seems to work perfect, perfectly for me. OK, it's going to pop up, so I want to add a bit of a background to it. So just pop in whatever background you want right here. And for convenience, I'm going to pop in a black color. You're not going to see much change there because it's black on black. So actually, let's, let's make it purple so you can see what's going on. There we go. And I'm just going to give it a little bit of space all around. So I'm going to go over to Design and Spacing. And I'm going to give it 30 pixels all around. Just put in the number. It'll put in the pics for you. Hit the chain. It'll do the opposite side. We'll do the same for the left and the right. And as you can see, that gives it a bit of space all around. OK. Let's close up the spacing. And you can style the button however you wish. Mine's got my default button setting there, but if you want to change it, just go in here and hit the custom styles. And you can change it to whatever you want. Backgrounds, text colors, fonts, anything you want. So I'm fairly happy with that. I can't see my capture text there very well, so I need to go into that and change that. So I'm going to close up the button. Just above, we've got capture text. And I'm going to simply make that white so you can see it. There we go. Then when it pops up before they can send it, they have to do the mathematical equation of 13 plus 3 and put the answer in there. And it'll be different every time it pops up. 
Okay, so I'm happy with that as my little form. It's, it's a pretty ugly looking form, but you get the idea. Obviously, you want to style yours however you wish. So I'm going to save this. Now we're going to save it to the Divi library. So just to the left of the trash can right here, you'll see the circular icon. Left click on it, give it a name. I'll say pop up form. And save to library. That's great. And once we're happy with it, we can trash it. Because we don't want it here, we just want it to pop up when we want it. Okay, let's save the page changes. I'm going to go back to my dashboard now because we've got to create a custom header to do this. So if you just go down to Divi, Theme Builder, I've already got one in there with the one I showed you. So let's just trash this and we'll start again. I'm going to delete that. And I'm going to start from scratch. Build a global header. I'm going to build from scratch. I'm going to use a row like this one so I can put my logo and header in here and just a little button on the right hand side there. And to do this I'm going to use a regular Divi menu module. So if we roll down a bit, here's a menu module. Choose the menu that you want to put in there. My top menu is called TB, that's the one I'll use. You can add a logo below. Let's find my logo. It's probably going to be all the way down the bottom. There we go. I'll pop that one in. So we've got our logo. We've got our menu. And you can choose other elements. If you've got WooCommerce installed, you can show a shopping cart right here. You can show a search icon if you choose to as well. I'm going to leave both of those off. I've not got WooCommerce installed and I don't particularly want to show the icon. Don't need to put a link in. And I don't need to put a background in. I'm going to leave mine white just like that. But what I do need to do is I'm going to sort out a bit of spacing here. This is pretty tall looking right here. So I'm going to save what I've got there. We'll come back and adjust this in a moment. I'm going to go into my section, blue tab for the section. I'm going to take any away any padding that's there. So I'm going to hit the little cog. I'm going to go to design, spacing, top and bottom. I'm simply going to put a zero in there. Hit the chain to do the bottom as well. That's great. Fantastic. And while I'm in the section, I want this to be a sticky header so that when they roll down the site, it stays in place so they can access it all the time. To do that, let's go over to our advanced tab. We'll go down to scroll effects, sticky position, stick to top. So it's going to stay on the top when they scroll down the site. OK, that's great. And we've got a row in there and that seems to be okay padding wise if it looks too wide for you just take some more padding away from the row there that's fine right let's add the little button that we want to pop up our little contact form with so i'm going to use a little button module right there there it is it's popped it in right there button link i don't even need to put one in because we're going to use it to pop up our module in a moment but I will style it a bit more like our site here. So let's go to design. Alignment wise, I'm going to align it to the left so it's a little closer. That's the default for it at the moment. You can put it in the middle or on the right. And also, we can decide where to put it on mobile and tablet. If you hover over the dark writing here, and this is common to most Divi modules, you'll see some icons pop up. If there's a little mobile phone type icon there. You can change the settings for tablet. It's on the left there and our little hamburger menu is on the right. I think I'll put it in the middle for tablet. And for phone, that works in the middle for tablet too. That's great. Okay. Well, let's go back in and I'm going to make that button design wise. I'm going to go down to the button. Use custom styles for button. I'm going to use the same colors for my logo here. And let's just pop it back to desktop. I've got a little color picker up here. So let's grab the color that I'm using in the logo right there. Copy. 
takes colors absolutely fine I might take it down in size a little bit it's 20 picks I'm gonna take it down to 16 I think I'll make my menu text 16 picks also in a minute and you can slide or you can type in a value and you can increment up and down with a little arrows there button text color I'm gonna leave that just as it is at white here's the background okay so I want to add that color that I just copied there it is there's that dark blue color and let's for the hover state perhaps have that light blue color and again hover over the dark writing there and if you see a little arrow you can set a hover and a desktop state desktops when your mouse isn't on it hover obviously when your mouse is on it so for the hover state let's give it this light blue color here I'm just pasting that hex code in there there we go and I'm going to flip it back to desktop okay so it's sitting a little high up so I want to use margin to push it down you can't use padding because that'll make the button fatter so let's close up our button styles here and we'll go down to spacing for instance if I put 20 pixels margin on the bottom you'll see it get deeper so we can't really use that so I'll do it with margin at the top here and let's give it 20 pixels on the top to pop it down I think that's pretty much in line right there you can always increment up and down and adjust it to your satisfaction all right now we want to make that button pop up our form that we just created so if we go over to advanced down to visibility roll down a bit you're going to see a little button that says use pop-up now in the beginning of this video we went into our Divi Supreme Pro and enabled a switch that says use pop-ups make sure you've done that because if you don't you won't see this switch so make sure you did that first step so I'm going to switch this to on pop-up type layout you can have iframe image or video and you can say what well, library item you want to pop up well we created that form and we called it a pop-up form and it's right down the bottom I believe the new ones usually end up down there I've got a lot of things in my library here there it is pop-up form trigger on module click that'll work you can also trigger it on button click which will work for this because the module is a button you can use an image hyperlink page load pay a scroll when the you scroll down the page or exit intent and exit intent is when people go up to exit the site so I'm gonna leave it on module click that's gonna work fine for me to close it click anywhere outside of the pop-up here or you can just use the close button it's gonna put a close button there by default you don't want to use auto close pop-up because you can set a time value there and it'll automatically close after the time period that you specify so we don't want to do that there's all kind of entrance and exits animations you can use I'm happy with the default but there's plenty to choose from if you want to add a bit of dynamics to it pop-up position center it's going to pop it up in the center of the page I want it to be absolute so if they scroll up and down it's going to stay where it is I don't want to use full width if I use full width it's going to cover up the menu and the footer and all we will see is the pop-up itself great feature but I don't want to use that today max width I'm going to leave it on the default 680 and again if you click on the little mobile phone type icon you can set different widths for tablet and phone if you wish but I'm happy with that 680 it seems to work in most situations for me it's going to show an overlay behind the form which will darken out the site a little bit a bit like a light box effect and you can choose your color here if you want to show the close button yeah I'll leave that in there close button placement inside the actual form that's fine you've got an icon you can put in there the defaults an X which is pretty standard for closing things and you can choose the size of it up here and the color of it down here so we should be good to go with our little button I just want to do a little bit more work on this I want to pop this text into the middle I want to give our header a little shadow on the bottom so we can actually see where it ends there on the light colored pages so I'm going to go back into the menu 
going to go into my text. I'm going to make that text the same size as the contact button with, with 16 picks. Here's the menu text in the design tab. I'll roll down just a little bit. Here's the size. I'll pop it up to 16. And if I roll down a little bit more, here's the alignment. You can align it middle or you can align it right if you want to. Have it closer to, to that button. And again, you can change it on mobile and tablet views if you want to. I think I'm going to keep mine in the middle. I'm quite happy with that. So I'll save that. And last but not least, I'm just going to put a little bit of box shadow on our section right here. Blue tab for the section, green tab for a row, dark tab for a module. I'm going to go in there, going to go over the design tab, roll on down. Here's the box shadow. I'm going to pop that on there so we can see where it actually ends there. So this should now work and this will replace any header that we've got on the theme at the moment. When you create a new global header, it just replaces whatever whatever header you're using. So let's save this. Save our changes down here. Hit the little X at the top. Make sure to chain, save the changes up here. And if we go to our site, you're not going to see a whole lot of difference because they should be fairly similar there. So I'll just refresh you. We've got our new header up there. And there it is. There's our new header with our logo, our menu, and our little contact form. When we click on it, it's going to pop up that ugly looking form that we created and put in our library. And people can just fill it out and send it. Of course, they've got to do that little capture there, 12 plus 6, 18. I'm not going to send it because I haven't got anywhere to send it to. OK, and you can either hit the X there or click anywhere outside and it'll close it for you. So I hope that's answered that question. Yes, you can have an email pop up in your header and it's really easy to do. All you're going to need is the Divi Supreme modules added to your Divi site. So I hope you've enjoyed this today and found it useful. If you have, please give it a thumbs up, ring the bell, comment, share and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Once again, this has been Jamie from System22 and WebDesignAndTechTips.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.